Good morning, everyone. As, as we're living our lives here on earth, um, it's short, right? And, and, that me, and as I get older, I realize how short it is. But, but the reality is you're not going to take much out of here. As a matter of fact, you're not going to take anything material out of here. But you will take, if, you, if, you, if you're wise, you'll take your relationships out of here. And the most, if, if you're not rich in relationships, you're not rich at all. And, and we got to be careful that we're not just burning through life and then burning through our relationships. Uh, when, when Jesus came, he came to give us life in abundance. But what he came for was a relationship with us. And then to empower us to have great relationships with others, right? Uh, and how we know that is, is the fruit, the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. And you might be saying, this is your first time here. When God's Spirit comes into your life, it produces results. He produces it when he comes into your life. Are you saying that God's Spirit could come and live inside of me? Yes, God's Spirit could come live inside of you. Just imagine that. Some of us believe that you could be possessed by demons, but you don't believe that you could be possessed by God's spirit. How crazy, right? But, and I've seen that people, I've had people come to me and say, Pastor, can you go ahead and pray over my house? Like, my house is haunted, right? And usually if your house is haunted, they're haunted by the spirits that you carry. And you got to remove them, right? Because where there's light, where there's light, darkness has to go. So we... we I go, let's clean you out first, and then we could clean your house out. But, but this idea, we believe in that, but sometimes we don't believe that God's spirit can actually move inside of you. Now, if, if when, you, when God's spirit comes inside of you, that's when you're, that's, it describes a born-again experience. That means you're a brand-new person. And then when God's spirit's in you, this is what it does. It makes you like Jesus. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Somebody want that? Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, all those things. And this is the truth. If you're kind and you're loving and you're joyful, right? This is what God produces in your life. Aren't you going to be better at relationships if you're patient? Aren't you going to be better at relationships? So this is what it's all about. God wants to have a relationship with you. So you could have, build relationships with others and use your relationship as a bridge to bridge them to the one that changes their life forever, Jesus Christ. So today we're so glad that you're here and we got so many great things that are happening. But we're believing that today could be your moment. It could be your turnaround moment. We just sang a few songs today and worshiping the Lord, magnifying the answer, not the problems. That's what we did. And now we're going to study the Bible and it's, it's, it's really amazing how just a few words that we studied today can change your life forever. The team goes into, they go into Cal State San Bernardino, an atheist hears it, and all of a sudden he has faith, he gives his life to the Lord, he's no longer suicidal, he's no longer depressed, he goes, I have hope, a moment. This, this word can change your life forever. It can happen if you're ready to hear it, understand it. All I'm saying is, get in this moment. What you're looking for is right here. This could be the most important meeting you've ever been to in your life. Depression can leave you. Anxiety can leave you. Come on. But addiction can leave you today. Demons can leave you today. And you could get restored. You could be forgiven. And you could have a brand new start. How many would like miracles that happen in your life today? It happens through the study of the Bible. Everything that God does, he first says it and then he does it. And that's what God wants to do. He's going to speak something in your life. And I, I pray it builds your faith so you can receive what he's trying to get to you. Jesus doesn't show up empty-handed. He shows up and he knows what you need and he's ready to give it to you. You're one faith, faith, one belief away from your life being transformed forever. One belief away. That's what we're here to do. Build your faith in Jesus, right? Um, before I pray, I just want to let you know uh, we're having a Christmas Christmas uh, 
It's us a musical, and we need a choir and singers and all that stuff. We got actually at 1.30, we're going to have a meeting where it's one of these rooms. What room is it? Does anybody know? South Hall over there. So if you want, if you're like, I want to be part of the Christmas North Hall, South or North, it don't matter. It's over there, right? Yeah, just get over there, right? And, and also, uh, and then we have membership class today. And if, if you know this is your church home, make it official. I would love to shake your hand. I just want to know who I'm actually pastoring. And, and just we're just going to go over the values of our church. And we'd love to see And we even have lunch for you. So if you're planning to go get lunch, you get free lunch right here. And if you showed up last membership, um, save the lunch for it. Don't show up again. <laughs> well, I just want to officially really make sure I'm a member, right? What, what we got for lunch? <laughs> so, but anyway, if you want to, you can. If you're that hungry, show up, right? But we'd love to see you there. Make it official. And, and, and the idea is you're never going to get to the next level without next level commitment. And see, people want next level life, but they don't want to make next level commitment. And, and one of the things that some of us struggle with, you struggle making commitments. And because you don't make real deep commitments, you have a superficial life and you can't accomplish great things. So it's time to start with making a commitment to your house of God. This is my home. This is my church, okay? Um, so and then tonight, if there's some tickets left, Want to see the drama? It is amazing. It'll change your life. That's in Pomona. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. So many great things are happening, but most of all, your people are here, and you love every single person in this room. As we study your word today, I'm asking, Lord, use me, teach through me, make, what, make your word known, and cause faith to rise up so, Father, people can be saved and set free and receive the life that you want to give them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the battle within. Someone say the battle within. Um, every single one of us, your, your greatest battles are the stuff that's in you. Um, it's not outside of you. Your greatest battle is not with your spouse, with the person at your job, with, with the economy. Um, none of those things are your greatest battles. Your greatest battles are inside of you. Um, we have emotional battles. We have thought battles. And many of us are struggling to the point that you've said over and over, I want to change. I need to overcome this because it's hurting me. It's hurting my family. I'm tired. Something has to change. But this is what's happening. You feel like you're losing. Oh, so today what we want to talk about is how to win that battle and become victorious and not just win that battle, be more than an overcomer. How do you know that you're really winning? You're really winning when you could not only win, you could help others win. So God doesn't want to take, see the struggles that you're going through right now were not meant to defeat you. They're meant to point you to the one that can help you and it's Jesus Christ. He can help you. So we're going to talk about the battle within every single one of us. We're all in the same boat. And you know why? We're all humans. Not everybody wins the battle, but let's look at this scripture um, it's in Romans chapter 7, and this was written by Paul, uh, Paul the Apostle. He wrote a lot of the New Testament, uh, and he's describing the struggle that he has. And I can relate to this struggle, and I think as we go over the struggle, you're going to say, I can relate. Let's see what he says about the struggle within himself. In Romans chapter 7, verse 14, and then we're going to go to 15, 18, 24, and 25. It says this, the trouble is within me for I am too human a slave to sin and what he was saying is I'm human and there's a problem I'm running into there's some behavior that I really don't like and I want to stop it's wrong behavior but I can't I can't stop the anger I can't stop the jealousy I can't stop the lust I can't stop the destructive things that I'm doing I'm a slave to it this is what happens we're creatures of habit. Say with me, creatures of habit. And this is what it means. Whatever you give yourself to over and over, you eventually become a slave of, or you could become addicted to, or it becomes a habit. Some of us have good habits, and some of us have bad habits. And those bad habits are the ones that you become a slave to, and you're saying, ma'am, I promise you, I'll never do it again. I need to stop this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm messing up. I'm sorry. And you keep saying you're sorry. 
you keep telling yourself no more. You're tired of the hangovers. You're tired of the anger fits. You're tired of fighting with everybody. You're tired of the depression. You're tired of the things that are coming out of your mouth. You're tired of the lust. You're tired of the adultery. You're tired and you say, man, something has to shift. But there's a problem. You can't fix you. But there's one that can help you. We're going to talk about the solution here. You can't fix you. The psychiatrist can't fix you. I'm not, against, I'm not against you going to see a psychiatrist and getting some therapy, but they can help you cope, but they can't transform you. There's one that can transform you from this slavery or this cycle of self-destruction or emotional distress. Who are you going to go to with your depression? You're going to go to the, the you're going to go to the, to the dope dealer and say, hey, I just need a little dope to deal with my depression. They can't, they can only masquerade it, but they can't fix you. Matter of fact, you go to the dope dealer and you become more dopey. It's so crazy how they call it dope. Dope, right? right? But the idea is it promises you something it'll never deliver. What, so what happens, we keep going to sin to solve the problem of sin. And all it does is get you into deeper darkness, deeper depression, deeper failure, and deeper chains. But just because you've been a slave, I thank God that today I'm going to introduce you to the one that sets slaves and captives free. You can be set free. You can be set free of the cycles of destruction. You can be set free from your generational curses of your family. You can be set free from mental torment. Tor torment. You can be set free from demonic torment. You can be set free from anxiety. You, you can be set free from cycles of failure. You can be set free today. Today could be your brand new day. Come on, someone came in here a slave and they're going to leave free. Okay, now. So we could identify with the slavery part, and I, I've been there. I've been there, and we'll discuss my issues in a little bit. I don't really, this is what he says, I don't really understand myself. I, man, some of, I mean, we don't. Like, why do I do that, right? For I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Man, this Paul's talking about. I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. And then I end up doing what I hate. It's, I want you to know this principle. You got to be careful who, you got to be careful with this word hate. Some of us hate, and this is crazy, you hate your mama because they hurt you. You might hate your family members because of the wrong they did for you. You might hate your boss or a, or a friend, or that used to be a friend, or an ex-friend, but you hate them because they hurt you. But this is a problem. You become what you hate. And it's so crazy. I hate my mama used to do this, and now you're doing the same exact thing as your mama. And if someone told you you're just like your mama, you'd punch them in the mouth. Like, no, I ain't. Say it again, I dare you. But this is what happens. You end up, when you hate somebody, you end up reflecting their image. You become what you hate. Well, I got good news for you. You can forgive them, let them go, and you can let that go, and they'll have no more power over you. Praise God we can get set free from that too. But, but this is what he's saying. I keep doing what I hate. Is there anything that you keep doing and you're like, I hate when I do that? Have you ever said that to yourself? I hate when I do that. Well, I got good news for you. We're going to give you the solution in a minute. We could win this battle. And this is what he says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what's right, but I can't. Now, he introduces the sinful nature, which is the human nature. Say it with me, human nature. Every one of us are born with a human nature or a sinful nature. That's why you don't need to teach a little boy or a little girl to lie. They'll lie. I remember, I remember, um. Um, my dad, we had a business and he, he'd always have cash in his pocket and then he'd put it in a little drawer. And my, my brother, my, my brother Robert, this is when he was like 10 years old, if you can imagine that. He invites one of his friends over and my, his friend found the, the stack of dollars or money and he took $100. He didn't let nobody know though. 
No one had to teach him how to be a thief. No one needed to teach him how to lie. You're born with that nature, right? So, and isn't it right you have to teach your kids? Share. You don't have to teach them how to be greedy. That's mine. But you do need to teach them how to share. So, so anyways, the little boy shows up to our house um, the next week. And this is what he says to all of us. He said, my mom told me to tell you if there's $100 missing, it wasn't me. <laughs> Isn't that what we do, try to cover up our sin? Some of us are really good fibbers. Have you ever been, have you ever like sin and fib real good? Fib so good that you even believe your lies? Fib lied so well that the person's like, I saw you. We got the video. That ain't me. And they like, I swear on my own children. Oh, here we go. Some of us go way too far. But understand this. You can lie to yourself and you can lie to everybody, but you still got this sinful nature that if you don't get some help, you can't overcome it. Now, the sinful nature is the lustful nature. And this is what it means. It desires what God forbids. There's not all desires you have are right desires. There's some desires that you're born with that are absolutely lustful and forbidden desires. And just because you have it doesn't mean you should go with it. Because it's a sinful desire. And there's a problem with making wrong decisions. Wrong decisions don't lead to a right life. When you make wrong decisions, understand this. In the end, it's going to lead to a result you never wanted. And this is what I've learned about wrong decisions. Usually the price you pay for a wrong decision is higher than you were willing to pay. The price is higher. But I got good news for you. God is not giving you instructions to mess up your life. He's giving you instructions to get you where you've always wanted to be. These instructions, if you follow them, they'll lead you to prosperity. They'll lead you to success. They'll lead you to restoration. And most of all, they'll lead you to heaven. So let's keep on reading old Paul's struggle. I want to do what's good, but I don't. I want to, I don't want to do what's wrong, but I do it anyway. All right. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? What, what ends up happening as we start making these wrong decisions, misery comes in. And some of us have a really bad image of ourselves because of the mistakes you've made. But understand this. There's no one here that hasn't made a lot of mistakes. Every one of us had made mistakes, but don't let your mistakes and don't make your failures your identity. You might feel miserable about the decisions you made, but this is what God is saying to you. You don't need to stay in that misery category because the truth is every single one of us in this room have done things that make us feel miserable, but there is forgiveness. You can have a brand new beginning and you can be restored. It is not over. How many believe that? Things can turn around now. It can, it can turn around. That's what Jesus does. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Many of us here, you need to get over your guilt trip. Let's talk about that just for a second. You know, when you have a guilt trip, you know what you do? is self-sabotage yourself. It's called self-sabotage. That means you don't even allow yourself to succeed or have really good relationships. And there's a reason. You don't feel you deserve it. So deep down, anytime you're almost getting ahead, you almost get a break, you just blow it up. And you see those cycles, I was almost there, and then you blow it up. And you know why you blow it up? Because you don't think you deserve it. And we're going to break that off of your life today because the good news, no one deserves it. And the blessings of God don't come to those who deserve it. The blessings of God come to those who are willing to receive it. But come on, receive it. It's grace. Someone said it's not earned. Praise God that the gifts that God has for you, the breakthrough that God has for you, is not earned. It's just a gift that you receive by believing. I love God because he's so full of grace. He says, so now, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Now, this is the truth. Sin always leads to death. 
you make a bad choice, it leads to this word called death. This word death in, in the Hebrew is pronounced thanatos, and it sounds really evil. I'll even say it more Halloween-like, thanatos. So sin and death go together. Hamburgers, fries. Peanut butter and jelly, right? So these things go together, and, and you can't do sin without reaping death. You can't plant a tomato seed and get apples. When you plant tomatoes, you get what? Tomatoes. When you plant sin, what do you get? Death. And so we think like, I'm going to, and this is what happens to young people. Parents tell the kids, hey, don't go down that way. I made those decisions. It didn't work out for me. You see the mess I'm in right now. And the kid says something like this. Mom, you live your life. Let me live my life. What they're saying is, I'm going to do it the wrong way like you did it, but I'm not going to reap the same, reward, the same consequences you did because I'm smarter than you. Some of you, some of you guys think you could outrun your own seed. Because the truth is, whatever you plant, you're going to harvest. You will reap what you sow, and if you don't like what you're sowing, look yourself in the mirror because you're the farmer. Well, I don't like the harvest I got. You're the farmer. And God's telling you right now, if you keep sowing sin, I know it's pleasurable, and I know you like the lust, and I know you like the porn, and I, I know you like the adulterous fair you in, and I know you like the temporary high, and I know, I know you like all of it, but there's a problem. You're sowing the wrong seed, and you want a better life, and all it's going to do at the end is produce death. Thanatos. Now, it is really scary if you know what the word death means. It doesn't just mean that you're going to die because it's not like you sin and all of a sudden you croak. So I've been sinning for 38 years. I haven't died. It's not. It's, it's more than that. It's spiritual death. And spiritual death has to do with first level of death is misery. And this is what it means. It's going to lead you to extreme unhappiness. So we're living in a world today um, that the number one cause of disability today is not because someone hurt their back or, or they got some kind of sickness. The number one cause of disability today is depression. We're living in a really depressed society. And that's why we legalize marijuana because we're so depressed. We're saying a little weed takes the edge off. A little drink takes the edge off. But this is a problem. All you're doing is self-medicating your misery. But it's not going to fix your misery. It's, uh, by, the time you stop get, you, by the time you stop getting high and getting drunk, this is what's going to happen. You started with a level of misery, and now you went to a whole other level of extreme misery. Sin will eventually, it promises you happiness, but it leaves you extremely miserable. But not only does it leave you extremely unhappy and miserable, you pass on your misery to those who are closest to you. You know why some of our families aren't working, or out, working out? Because there's a problem. Sin produces death. You want this great relationship, but you keep on doing it the wrong way. Keep on planting the wrong seed. And you want a happy marriage. And you want good old kids. And, and I want to prosper. And I want to do it. But the problem is, until you start, stop. And you say, you know what? I've been doing this all wrong. How can you get right if you keep being in denial of the wrong choices you're making? Now, we're not here to dog anybody. We're here to look ourselves in the mirror and make some adjustments. And I, and I pray that we make the adjustments so we can have a new life. God is saying, I'm giving you the seed of my word. I'm giving you my truth. And if you start living by my truth, I promise you, and you start doing it, I promise you that you will have a rich and abundant life. You will have my peace. You will have my joy. You'll succeed. You'll overcome. You'll be more than a conqueror. Does anybody want to turn these losses into wins? Come on, the depression into peace and the joy. You could do it. Your worst enemy is not the devil. And, and, and if, you keep, if you keep being like, if we keep just being in denial, this is what happens. Instead of admitting that you're the cause of the mess you got in your life, this is all you're going to do is blame everybody. You're the cause of my happiness. I'm going to divorce you. Let me get another swipe. No, next one. Swipe, swipe. 
You guys are swiping people out of your life like, like it's the internet. Bam, bam, bam. Not you, 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 not you. Like a choir director. <laughs> Join the Christmas choir. But there's a problem. You'll never get fixed either, blaming everybody. And I'm not saying people didn't hurt you. I'm not saying people didn't walk out on you. I'm not saying that they, were un they weren't unfaithful to you. But you got to start saying, I'm done blaming. And I'm here to take responsibility for my part. And the change begins right now. And God, help me set, get set free from the cycle of sin and death. This is going to lead. You keep on doing it your way. Extremely unhappy. Some of us are extremely unhappy. So, I wonder what it is. And I'm telling you right now, it's your sin. The second definition of death is this, ruin and destruction. So sin reaps sin and death, sin and ruin and destruction. If you keep on doing it your way, this way you're going you're to ruin your relationships. You're going to ruin your mind. You're going to ruin your body. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna ruin your marriage. You're going to ruin your kids. Because sin brings ruin and destruction. The third definition of death, I, I don't think you want none of it, is addiction. It's bondage. You can't give yourself to a sin without it finally making you an addict and a slave to it. The third definition of sin is eternal separation from God in a, in a hell forever. See, a lot of people don't want, they don't want to talk about this subject because they don't want people to feel uncomfortable, but I'd rather you feel uncomfortable right now to realize that one day you're going to die and you're going to give an account for your life. And if you live it wrong, don't expect to get to heaven. Don't expect to have a better life afterwards. We say that so easily. Oh, they're in a better life. Do you know? Do you know? Are you sure? Because if they've not been saved... They died in their misery. They died in their ruin. They died in their addiction. And they died separated from God. And there's no undoing that because once you die, it's over. While you got, you got chance, the opportunity to change is while you got breath in your lungs. Thank God that God brought you here today and he's saying, I'm your doctor, I'm your counselor, I'm your psychiatrist, I'm the one that can fix you, I'm the one that can save you, and I love you so much. Why don't you go ahead and try me? You've tried everything else. Give God some praise. That's true. That's true. So now, sin and what? Death. I fear God. Like, I know this. If I sin, death is coming because they come together. I don't ever think like I sin, I'm going to get away with it. Because I already know how it works. That's why I don't have to be a prophet. I could look at someone, I go, what, what decision are you make? And look at their life, I go, oh my gosh, you're headed for destruction. Well, how'd you know? Don't curse me. I'm not cursing you, you're cursing you. I'm just telling you, because I know how it works, that your decisions are going to lead to destruction, ruin, misery, addiction, extreme depression, anxiety, fear. You're going to lose your mind. You're going to destroy your body. You're going to make yourself sick because of your sin. And then at the end, you're going to hell. Pastor, don't send up people to hell. I'm not sending people to hell. They choose to go there. You have to get through Jesus. You're going to have to get through this message. You have to get through love and say, I love my sin and I, I'm okay with it. Some people think, I've even heard this. I'm, I don't care if I go to hell, party with my friends. Do you, come on. Do you really think you guys are going to be partying, burning? You're not going to be smoking dope. You're, gonna, you're the one that's going to be smoked. Oh, that was a good one. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> That'd be, I'm not making it funny. I'm just telling you, <laughs> if you don't straighten out, <laughs> saying he's going to be smoking you. <laughs> all right. Now, all of this has been kind of depressing up to the air <laughs> because... It's like, oh, my gosh, I'm miserable. I can't do it. I can't stop. I keep going. Oh, my gosh, I'm a slave. I'm addicted. I can't. I'm miserable. I'm depressed. I'm excited. It's true. 
But there's an answer in verse 25. Thank God we don't need to stay in verse 24. There's a verse 25, and it has all the answers to your problems. And there's one that can set you free from your misery, heal you of your broken heart, give you a brand new start. Come on, set you free from your addiction and give you eternal life. And it can start right now. Thank God there's an answer. And look what it says. I love, I love Paul. This is what he says. Thank God. You know why someone's like, why is he yelling? It's the exclamation point. Where is it up there? Where is verse, we're in verse 25. You're still on verse 24. There it goes. Verse 24, how miserable I am. Verse 25, thank God. So why are you yelling? Because if you know how miserable I've been, if you know the struggle and ho how hopeless I've been, if you know, come on, you know the, the cycles of destruction and the curses that have been in my life and I had no answers, I've tried everything and then I found the answer, thank God. <laughs> Say with me. Thank God. Wow. One more time. The devil's mad now because we just got into the solution to the problem. He was hoping you'd never come into this place. And he's, you're wondering, how do I get to this place to hear this message? Because it's your time to thank God for the breakthrough that you've been looking for. Come on, they tried, the doctors tried to fix you. Your mama tried to fix you. Your husband tried to fix you. Everybody tried to fix you, but you were too broken. But there's a God that specializes in broken people. And he said, here, thank God. Now, we got to work on, you know what thank God means? You say thank you because you've received something. You've received something. You've received enough of the accusations, the condemnation, the misery from the devil over and over. Pain, cycles of abuse. It just seems like it doesn't, doesn't end. Being rejected everywhere you go. You've been trying. You've been trying to do better. And you have some dreams. You're kind of losing it. You're thinking, maybe it's not for me. Maybe one, everyone else could win, but not me. I don't deserve to win. But God is saying, I brought you here. And the reason I brought you now, because this is your time. If I would have brought you last year, you still had a lot of moves still. You were still trying to be a player. You, you, you would have said, I don't, I, he's just crazy. When well, we're getting out of here. But there's something right now that has grabbed your attention. And he's saying, come on, I brought you here right now because this is your time. This is your moment. This is the time. By the time we're done, you're going to be able to say, thank God. Look, I love this. What's the answer to all this misery? <laughs> Pain, cycles of destruction, hell in our lives, hell in our family, darkness, pain, suffering, hopelessness, suicidal thoughts. Who the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is in the mind. I really want to obey God's law, but, but. Because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave. Somebody says, the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's a question. Who's going to set you free? Who's going to save you? There is an answer to your problem. The equal sign to your problem is Jesus. Come on, the equal sign to your defeat is Jesus Christ. He's the one that can save you, you and your family and your marriage. Somebody was headed for destruction, but now they're headed for restoration. They're headed for a new beginning. They're headed for freedom. Come on, give God a little bit of praise. Thank God for what Jesus Christ is your answer. And this is the truth. This is the truth. You can't save you. Or you already did it. And then stop looking for people to save you. Save me. Make me whole. 
make me happy. You're my savior. How many people, because we're broken, how crazy it is, two broken, empty people come together and say, would you please make me whole? <laughs> if you make me whole, I'll make you whole. <laughs> I'm laughing, it's so funny. All the promises are broken because there's not a person on this life that can make you whole. If you want to have a whole relationship, get your wholeness from a relationship with God. Come on, get your wholeness on the inside. And when you're whole on the inside, you can have some healthy relationships on the outside. But it's time to fix what's in here and win the battle that's in here so you can start winning out there. One more praise to God because it's true. God wants to take you to that place. You can't set yourself free. And this is what happens. The spirit of suicide is a spirit of lying, deception. And this is what it does. It says this, kill yourself and you'll be set free from your sinful nature and the misery. It's a lie. It doesn't set you free. It sends you into eternity. And you can't come back. You better thank God that you got life. And if you're suicidal here, thank God that God brought you here and let you know you don't have to kill yourself because there's one that could set you free from your misery, from your depression. It's not me. It's Jesus Christ. Thank God Jesus is the answer. And we're going to end it with this verse. And this is how you receive the help. The help is Christ in you. Say it with me. The help is what? There's people here, and there's only two groups. There are those that have Christ's spirit living in them, and then there's another group that don't have Christ's spirit living in them. Okay? We're born without Christ's spirit in us. The only way to get Christ's spirit in you is to be saved, or we call it being born again. The born-again experience describes a brand-new person totally transformed, and this is what transformed them. Not their sinful nature is transformed, but them as a person, God's Spirit moves in. Now, when God's Spirit comes inside of you, it gives you power over everything that you have that's been overpowering you. When Christ's Spirit comes inside of you, it gives you the power to become like Jesus. When Christ's spirit is in you, it gives you the power of God to do miracles, to walk in the supernatural, and be what you never could be. And you're going to be able to say, you're going to be able to say, I didn't fix me. I didn't save me. But there was a day that I called on Jesus, and then he forgave me, and then he filled me with his spirit, and he made me a brand new person. I thank God for Jesus Christ. And then he gave me a gift of his spirit to make me a brand new person. And this is a verse. Acts 2.30, it says, Peter replied. He was preaching like I'm preaching today. And then someone says, well, what do we do to be, like, what do we do about this? How do we get it? How do we get the breakthrough? How do we get the forgiveness? How do we get the healing? How do we, how do we get the eternal life? And they said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you'll receive, then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Just think about this. Imagine God's Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. It's the Spirit of Christ. It's the power of God living in you. You know what you can say now? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're going to be able to say this. Greater is he that's in me than whatever I'm facing in this world. Because the one that's in me is God's spirit himself. Are you guys still hearing me? Devil's trying to turn off my mic. It ain't going to work. So how do you do this? First thing. You can't follow Jesus until you break up following your sin. There's another message nobody wants to talk about. People say, just turn to God. No, you can't just turn to God. You got to turn from your sin first. 
You guys understand it, right? It, you got to get tired. I'm tired of do, going this way. I got to break up with my sin. Now, you can't fix you, but you got to acknowledge you. And you got to be sick and tired of your sin that's been destroying your life, your family, your mind, your body. You can say, I'm done with this sin. It's been pleasurable, but I'm breaking up with you today because I have a new master and his name is Jesus Christ. About face, now I'm following Jesus. You can't turn to God till you turn from your sin. Now, and I don't care what sin you got. Whatever sin you got that you identify with, this is a reality. You're identifying with your sinful nature. And this is a reality. You cannot fix your sinful nature. You need to be given a new nature with new desires and new power to live a life that you, you are meant to live. And you're going to receive that through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So turn to God and you get baptized in Jesus' name. And all this means is you're, you put your faith in Jesus alone. Not you. It's not willpower. It's God's power. Do you know why some of us are struggling in this room? Because you promised God, I'll never do it again. I promise you, I'll never, I'll fast 40 days and 40 nights just like Jesus. I can, 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 can. And what you're doing is you're trying to do what only the Holy Spirit can do. Stop trying to sanctify you. Let God cleanse you. Let God deliver you. Let God, come on, let God help you. Say, man, I, you can finally got to say, I can't conquer this porn. I can't conquer this anger. And God says, finally, tap out so I can come in and fill you with my spirit. Stop depending on yourself. Depend on my power of my spirit. Amen. You guys understand that. Religion points you to law and rules. God, but, but Jesus, come on, when this message doesn't point you to laws and rules, it points you to the power of God to save you and set you free. You're not going to go to heaven and say, I'm here because I'm a good person. You're going to go to heaven. I'm here because I was a sinner. I was messed up. I was a drug addict. I was ruining everything. And then I heard a message and I placed my faith in Jesus and I was done with my sin. And then uh, God filled me with his spirit and it changed my life forever. Give God a little praise. Let's all stand up. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. Don't, nobody leave because it's super important. We're making decisions where we're going to spend eternity. So I said make a decision. Okay. So this message revealed human nature to us. That's all it did. It's the nature of man. We're all the same. So it doesn't matter who I talk to. I talk to people in the hood that strung out, hurting, hopeless, in complete poverty. But then, on the other side of the spectrum, I've talked to multimillionaires that have everything this life has to offer in the sense of materialism. They can buy any car they want. They have multiple homes all over the place, one on this coast, one on that coast. Businesses that are making millions of dollars in a year. And, but the problem is, all the money does, making money is nothing wrong with making money. But, but if you have money without Jesus, you're using your money to cover up your sin. So someone that's homeless on the street, we can see that they're, that you can see the repercussions of their sin. But sometimes when we got a lot of money, it, it, we could cover it up. You could buy a nice, old, you buy a nice purse. You could have a, a, a nice suit. But, it, but, it, but the problem is it doesn't fix inside of you. You're still miserable. And that's why Kate Spade, she hangs herself living in a probably $10 million suite in New York. Has everything. She hit every goal. But she's miserable still. What happened? I thought the money was supposed to solve it. The money can't solve your misery. The money can't save you. The money can't, come on, fix your destructive cycles you're in. And the money can't get you to heaven. Now, God has blessed you with that to be a blessing, and you're going to find your greatest joy as you release the finances God has given you to invest in transforming lives and making a difference in heaven forever and ever. That, that's the best thing you could do, but this is where we're at. And this is key. Just admit it. I need help. And Jesus is saying, I'll help you. I remember my daughter, when she was in a hospital with cancer, she was um, three, three years old. And, and she, I went in and she didn't understand the, the pain.
pain she's going through. She doesn't understand the medication. She doesn't understand a lot of it. But I went and prayed for her. And I go, baby, and this is the best I could do. I go, honey, I go, we're going to pray for God to help you. And then after we pray, God's going to help you. So I, I go, Abriana, I go, we're going to pray. And after we ask God for help, what is he going to do? And she said, and she with the, with the, the little energy she has, he's going to help me. I go, okay, baby, let's pray. And I'm telling you, that same God is available to you right now. And he's not here to judge you. He's not here to put you down. We're not here to judge you. We're not here to put you down. He's just saying, if you ask for help, I'll help you. I've sent my Holy Spirit to help you. Stop struggling. Give your life to Jesus. So if today, be honest, if you say, man, I'm miserable, but I want God to set me free from this misery and this depression, I'm done. I'm tired of self-medicating. I'm done. I'm tired of looking for people to make me whole. I'm done. Help me, Lord. And they said, two, and I need to be set free. I feel like I'm a slave to it now. I'm in the cycles. I can see the cycles now because it's been years. I see it's happening over and over. Different people, different places, same results. It's just being destroyed. It's not working out. I'm tired. Number three, you're sitting here saying, man, I'm addicted. I need to get set free. I really do. And number four, if you were to die today, you don't know if you're going to heaven. And you don't have to go to, for sure, you don't have to go to hell. Hell was created for the devil and his fallen angels. You don't have to follow the devil to hell. Heaven was created for you. If you go to hell, you're an imposter. You're not even supposed to be there. It was not created for you. But if you want to follow sin and the devil and you want to live that life, you end up there. But be, it would be your choice. But God loves you. So if you're saying, Pastor, I want to be saved. How you get saved is saying yes to Jesus. I'm going to give you an opportunity to act. Someone say act. Take action. I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to get set free. I want to be healed of my misery. I receive joy and peace of the Lord. Can't overcome it. I want to go to heaven. I want to give my life to Jesus. And I want God's spirit to come in me and make me a new person with new desires so I can do what I've never been able to do. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hands. One, thank God, raise your hands. Don't be ashamed. God's not ashamed of you. Two, and when I say three, this is your moment of truth. Don't be ashamed. This is between you and God. But why are you raising your hand? You're saying, I'm serious. I'm done with this thing. I, I, I need change right now. I don't care what nobody thinks. When you stand before God, you're not going to stand with the person to your right, to your left. You're going to stand by yourself. And this is your moment. If you confess him before men, Jesus will confess you before the Father in heaven. If you deny him before men, Jesus would have to deny you before the Father. But that would have been your choice. One, two, three. Free, raise your hands. I, been, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want a new life. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I want to get set free from the depression. I see the hand. Anybody else? Come on. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see those hands. I see those hands there. I see those hands in the back over there. This is your moment to be set free. This is your moment for a brand new beginning. This is your moment to receive eternal life. I want those to raise their hands. Could you do me one big favor? Will you allow me the privilege, and I really read it with all my heart, to pray with you? What I want you to do is just come up here real quick, and I'm just going to pray with you. We're not going to ask your name or anything. We're just going to pray with you. You're not going to have to do a speech. We're just going to pray with you. And this is what you're doing. By walking up here, you're walking away from your old life. You're, turn, you're repenting of your sins and turning to Jesus. If you raise your hand, come forward real quick. This is your repentance walk. This is your repentance walk. This is your repentance walk. Come on. It doesn't matter what you've done. You could be forgiven. You could be forgiven of the adultery. You could be forgiven of the anger. You could be forgiven of the abuse. You could be forgiven of the bad decisions. Come on. Someone's life's going to be restored. Someone's going to get back their kids. Someone's going to get back healthy relationships. Someone's going to get back their dreams. It's happening now. Come on, church. Thank God people are getting saved. Don't ever get tired of people getting saved in your church. This, come on. This is a this is a this is a privilege. This is an honor. Awesome. They're still coming. Come on, let's give them a hat. In heaven, they're having they're giving everybody a standing ovation. We love you. 
God loves you. For God so loved the world. He loves you. Hallelujah. Come on, they're still coming, church. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. It takes a real man to do this. It takes a real woman to do this. Anybody could just go out there and live with their sinful nature, do whatever they, they want to do with their bodies. Anybody could do that. But it finally takes a real man and woman to say, man, I need change in my life. Not only for me, but for my family. It has to start with somebody. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, church. The Holy Spirit's working. The Holy Spirit's touching lives. It's the way the Holy Spirit does. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, we got to thank God that the Holy Spirit's moving on hearts. Now, as they're coming, take it serious. We have membership class. If this is your home church and you've not made it official, this is your next step. At 1.30, we're going to be, I think it's 1.30, I don't know. Is it 1 o'clock? It's 1 o'clock, right? 1, yeah, so it's right now. Okay. We'll make it official. This is my church home. And I believe everybody needs a church family. How many understand that? We need a church family. And, and this is a family that's going to love you no matter what. And we're all crazy a little bit. Okay? We love you. So, none of you are an accident. You're not a mistake. And God loves every one of you the same with all of his heart. And today he's called you. And if someone were to ask you before church started, you know you're going to go up there and say, no, I ain't. I bet you. Bet. But something happened in these little moments that we had here. God touched your heart. And he offered you his life. He's offering you his love. He's offering you a new beginning and freedom. And you're saying yes. I'm proud of you. It's the best decision you'll ever make. But this is what you're going to do. Keep on saying yes. Someone say, keep saying yes. Every week, come to church. This is your family. Come to dinner. Let's eat together. Let's love each other. We need you. And you need us. We need each other. Start practicing some new habits, new disciplines. There's the places that you used to frequent. Frequent the house of God. Come every week. And I'll tell you this. If you do this for a year, I guarantee your life will never be the same. You're going to change your whole life. You're a product of the meetings you attend, the people you hang out with, and the books you read. This is the most important meeting of your week. Start off with God. I don't care how bad your week was. I go, be set Sunday, and you show up here. We need you, and you need us, and we need each other, right? There's going to be a day you're going to come in, celebrate, celebrate. There's going to be other, day, other times you're going to come in here, oh, my gosh. You're singing the old country blues, right? But it doesn't matter. There's going to be a day you're going to encourage someone. It's going to be a day you're going to encourage, but we need each other, okay? You're going to give your life to Jesus today. He's going to forgive you of every one of your sins. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to forgive yourself. Stop beating yourself up. We've all messed up. Let's start over. Someone say start over. Will you let yourself start over? Receive forgiveness. And then he's going to give you his spirit. So he's, going to, he's going to come live inside of you. He's going to give you eternal life. Someone say eternal life. The gift of eternal. If you were to die, you'd go to heaven because Jesus saved you and you have his life. Jesus' spirit is in you. And Jesus can't go to hell. And if Jesus' spirit in you, you can't go to hell either. You're not going to get there because you're so good. You're going to get there because the one in you is really good. Perfect, actually. You're not going to get there on your record. You're going to get there on his record. And he's going to be in you. Your faith is going to consistently be in him. Not in religion. Not in how well you're doing. Of course, you're going to improve. But don't make your relationship about how well you're doing. I did really good this week. My relationship is great. God says, no, don't worry about that. I'm going to help you. I'm going to coach you. You're going to have some ups and downs, but we're going to get through this. All the, We're going to get through all of it. But every day I guarantee this, you're going to be improving and you're going to be growing and you're going to become more like me. How many of you that's how it works? Let's pray. Let's pray together. And then we're going to receive Christ. Re bow your heads and close your eyes and repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you died on the cross. You suffered for my sins. You were buried and then you rose from the dead. You conquered death. You conquered the power of sin. And today, I ask you 
to forgive me of my sins. I repent for all the wrong choices I've done, the people I've hurt. I for, I forgive me, Lord, for hurting you, hurting myself. Today, I receive your forgiveness. I receive the gift of eternal life. Fill me now with your spirit. Set me free from depression, anxiety, addiction. I receive a brand new start. I am saved. I'm born again. And I'll follow you for the rest of my life. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I thank you, Lord, for a new life starting today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Congratulations. Now we're going to pray, but we also want you to sign up. Your next step is Holy Warriors 1. Then after that, we we'll, have Holy Wars 2 and 3. Holy Wars 1, we're going to be starting, I think, next week. So get sign up. We love you. If you want to, if you still need prayer, come this way. We'd love to pray with you.